Hello everyone, I know I promised to review this book a while ago, it's just that I've been sort of neglecting YouTube, which I shouldn't, because it is a huge part of what motivates me in life, and I really shouldn't neglect things that make me happy. But for now, let's review the so promised yellow wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. Uh, this book is number 42 on the Penguin Little Black Classics collection. Penguin made last year, I believe, uh, this ADP classic collection, which are the little drops of classic authors. Uh, here in Ireland they cost a euro fifty, which is quite a good price, and they give you a taste of some classic authors that you might like and want to read more about. They are little excerpts from sometimes things they are not so well known for, or unknown poems. It's actually quite good. I bought a bunch of these little ones, but I especially wanted to talk about Charlotte Perkins Gilman because I feel like her work really struck a chord with me. This book deals with female empowerment or lack of it. It also deals with mental health and those are subjects that are very close to my heart. This book's a selection of three of Charlotte's short stories. The first one is the title one, The Yellow Wallpaper. And it tells the story of this woman who suffers from depression, perhaps even postpartum depression, since she just had a child who is mentioned. Her husband kind of forces her to move into this country house in order to get better, get some fresh air. And she moves into this room that she really, really hates, and has this terrible yellow wallpaper. Charlotte Perkins Gilman was born in 1860 and died in 1935 in the United States. But I feel like this story, especially the first one, has a very English tone. If I had not known she was American, I would think she's an English author. Because it's quite hard to pinpoint exactly what makes it so English-like. But I do feel like the voice is very English or reminds me of classic English literature, I don't know. Now discussing the plot and the characters themselves. Her husband, although seemingly very lovely, it's kind of an alpha male, I know better kind of guy. Especially because he's also a doctor, so he thinks he has the authority to determine the way she must live her life in order to get better. In fact, this is not only a representation of patriarchal society and men trying to control women, but also a very good representation of the stigma mental health issues had in the past and still have. There are still people out there today who believe mental health is not a real issue. How can this be? I don't know because I myself always have the tendency toward mental health issues. As the book progresses and the main character becomes more and more paranoid, the story becomes quite dark and almost... and I should say it should be accompanied by maybe a trigger warning. I know it touched some wounds in me and I feel like if you suffer from mental health issues, please be sure that you are well enough to get into this otherwise it may mess up something that you're still not completely resolved, you're not well enough to deal with. So just be careful going into this and make sure you are in a good place to do it. This book also contains two other stories. Uh, the, f the second one's called The Rocking Chair. It's about two friends who move into this apartment because when they're walking down the street they see through the window a beautiful woman rocking on this rocking chair and they decide, ooh, we need to move into this apartment and see who this woman is. At first I was very intrigued with this story. It's much more American, you can feel the American vibe. And at first the, narrator, the narrator's gender is not revealed for the, like, first couple of pages and I found that quite intriguing. And I like to believe that the narrator was a woman, that she was like an independent working woman trying to be a journalist, moving into this new apartment with her male best friend and falling in love with an unknown woman. That was much more exciting, but in fact, after two pages, the gender of the narrator is revealed and the story kind of lost some of its spark for me. It was a little bit disappointing. The old story is called Bo Old Water. Each of these stories are around 15-20 pages. The book itself is 
54 pages long, so it's quite short. But the third story is again more of an English literature. I don't know why. It's just I had this feeling, I had this vibe. And it's quite humorous, it's like dark humor because it's a story of a young girl and her poet suitor who's trying to pursue her and make compliments and just kind of oblivious or not really caring too much. Of course, the story ends with a very dark plot twist. And this is something all of these stories have in common. They are all very dark, they all have this sense of something wicked this way comes. They all have this kind of suspense and horror-esque vibe to them. And they all have this somewhat horrifying, even if not always surprising, twist at the end. And as a whole, I would really recommend this just because it's cheap. It's lovely, it's a very well spent Euro 50, it's a very well spent hour. And the yellow wallpaper, it's a very good story. I've been recommended to everyone in many different aspects. It's a story that keeps growing and growing and I keep thinking about it even though I read it like two months ago. The other two kind of pale in comparison, they are also quite amusing and I don't know, Halloween just passed. I should have done this before Halloween because they have this Halloween-esque vibe to them but maybe next year, take a note um, that's it for today, I'll see you all very very soon, I hope I won't neglect you again, I swear, uh, goodbye